Isn't this one of the most oxymoronic statements that you could ever imagine that we're supposed to have gratitude for things that suck in life? Hey, David Essel here. I know it sounds so bizarre. It doesn't sound like it makes sense, right? It's like, why should I be happy when I've gone through a divorce? Why should I be happy when, or have gratitude? I shouldn't say happy. Big difference between happiness and gratitude. Uh, why should I be grateful that I've gone through a divorce? Why should I be grateful that I lost my, my dog? My God, I've lost several dogs in life and it really sucks. Um, why should I have gratitude for the fact that I lost a job? Why should I have gratitude for the fact that I lost a relationship? Why should I have gratitude that I'm struggling with these health issues? Like why, right? Like what sense does that make? And yet what's the alternative? The alternative is to be upset. The alternative, the alternative is to be angry. The alternative, alternative is to become a victim. The alternative is to tell people how unfair life is and how unfair your ex is and how unfair your former is and how unfair your boss is and how unfair your parents are. And, ah, right? But then when we think about having gratitude, so I'm gonna take make this very personal. I have the utmost amount of gratitude for being able to see my parents, to be with them part time, and to experience the four years of their illness and path scene. Now that might sound really strange that a guy is sitting here saying, I have so much gratitude for being around my mom and dad, even if it was virtually, even if mainly it was FaceTime, the last four years they were alive. My God, it started in COVID and it just, just before COVID and it was horrendous. I couldn't get there very much from Florida to New York because of all the restrictions, but we had FaceTime. And the gratefulness I have going through that process and my mom died three years ago, my dad a year and a half or a year ago. But the gratitude I have is immense because I learned so much about the grieving process I had never known before. What we learn in school is a tenth of what grief is about. I learned the most powerful traits of grieving. I learned how to grieve. I learned how to set up opportunities and gateways for my mother and father to visit me after they had passed over. So you see, I, I you, you take this, my parents dying in the first 10 months, I did not have gratitude for this. Let me make that clear. The first 10 months of their passing, I wasn't sitting here going, oh my God, I'm so grateful. I'm learning so much about grieving and death and dying and suffering and hell no. For 10 months, I was in sadness. I had no gratitude for them passing. There was nothing at all other than sadness. And then over the last three years, it's turned dramatically. I mean, my God, when I started creating gateways, openings, writing to my mom and dad, inviting them to visit me in the physical world while they're in the spiritual world. And I've done multiple podcasts and YouTube videos on their visits. I just did several of my dad's visits. Go to my YouTube channel and you can read. I have so much gratitude that I spent so much time trying to understand the grieving process and coming up with this concept that every tear that went down my face thinking about my mom and dad were tears of love, absolute love. You may not have that same relationship with your family, but I'm gonna say something that'll shock the hell out of you. If you want the truth, the spirit world is nothing but love. So if you really struggled with your mother and father in the physical world, in the spiritual world, they're pure love. Maybe it's time for you to forgive. Maybe it's time for you to get, forgive yourself for holding resentments against them. Maybe it's time to forgive them for treating you so poorly. And then maybe you can open a gateway and you can start to write to them and say that you'd love to see a sign from them. And all of a sudden the next day you wake up and there's a quarter on the kitchen table that wasn't there last night and you live alone. <laughs> I've had so many clients tell me these stories, you know. I had a client recently tell me that she had four feathers on her kitchen table. They don't have birds. There's no way birds, she lives in a condo. There's no way birds hit, but there was four feathers. And she said, you know, my ex-husband, my former husband who passed away, oh my God, he was an ornithologist a bird lover, a bird watcher, right? So, so there are signs like this, but we have to be open. I mean, my gosh, we have to be open to everything that I'm discussing today because life can be really challenging. It is really challenging. But when we have gratitude for the struggles, and I'm not talking about instant gratitude, you know, go through the struggle, be frustrated, be upset, it's part of life. 
But then what did I learn? Question number one to write down, what have I learned from this experience? Let's just say you went through a hellacious divorce and you're really mad and you're watching this video and you're going, David, what the hell are you talking about? How am I supposed to have gratitude for the divorce? And six months down the road, you go, oh my God, I'm so glad I went through that divorce. I couldn't imagine spending another number of years with that person, with their addictions, with their attitude, with their whatever it is they bring to the table that doesn't match me. You may not have gratitude when things suck in that second. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a proactive, longer view of life. When I look back at different things that have happened that really frustrated me, upset me, hurt me, there's very few, if any of them, that are still around today. I have gratitude for most of the things I went through, the death of my dogs, the death of my parents, the, the loss of, of my career in the beginning of COVID. Oh my God, we went to zero and then we had to build it back from scratch, right? At first I was so frustrated and then I had gratitude. Do you know why? Because COVID made me reach out and ask for help. COVID made me create brand new programs I never would have created without the pandemic being here. The pandemic forced me to get more creative. The pandemic forced me to be of more service because we started giving away our counseling constantly because I wanted to help people and there were so many people struggling that they couldn't get out of the house and we did free sessions on so I had immense gratitude for the pandemic not for the lives lost that aren't mine of course not I pray for people that lost their loved ones during the pandemic but I ended up after the pandemic the main part of it was over going oh my god I never would have created helping veterans heal helping Americans heal helping first responders heal. I wouldn't have written four books in two years and we've got more coming out. I mean, I have a lot of gratitude now, but I didn't in the beginning. So let's take this lesson. When we're going through tough times and we've gone through, and I tell you, the best thing to do is hire a professional, a counselor, a coach, a therapist, a psychologist, whatever you believe in. And then when you work through the pain, Open the doorway to gratitude. What have I learned here? What did this teach me? What do I need to move forward doing differently? How do I need to change? And all of those answers will come, especially if you write those questions down. And then you'll see that the struggle you went through had a really important meaning, a really important message for you to change. If I can help you at all, visit talkdavid.com. We have specials going on because of inflation. You can work with me one-on-one -on -one from anywhere in the world with discounted programs, talkdavid.com. And there's four free books there. They may help as well. Until next time, I'm David Essel. Have a beautiful day.